some organization, and this does not mean that anybody's better than anybody else, because Galatians 3.28 tells us that we're all one in Jesus Christ, and that's the, that's the important thing to remember. However, those who are, those who are, thank you, those who are um, to be recognized because of their leadership, their, their commitment, their, their actions, their, their love for the Lord, love for the church, there are factions. They're called factions in 1 Corinthians 11. It's called factions. That doesn't mean anything negative. It just says that those who are approved may be recognized, and that's what we're doing today as we prepare for even more growth. I'm going to ask uh, Brother, Brother Anthony Marcenas if you'd come forward at this point. Thank you. We're going to be ordaining deacons today for the first time. Deacons, uh, <laughs> deacons are very scriptural. You know, back in Acts 6, uh, the deacons were selected then. They were described as seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over support ministries. And that's what we're doing. Uh, de- uh, Brother Chris, would you come forward, please? In 2 Timothy 3, we find the qualifications for one who to serve as a deacon. It says, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience, but let these also first be tested, and then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless." And these men have definitely been tested. Several months ago, we issued a call. A number of men responded. And the men that you're going to recognize today are the ones that have risen to the top. Uh, Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel, would you come forward, please? A calling to the, the ministry of being a deacon, and it is a calling is a 24-7 calling. There are no off days for deacons. Deacons must be Christians of unimpeachable character, spirit-led, committed to the service of God and His bride by serving rise up people and pastors. Brother Yale, would you join us, please? They must be of sufficient spiritual maturity and understanding that they can teach others to teach still others. They must understand, they must themselves be teachable and able to operate with authority under authority. They must be intent on growing, learning, serving, and living at ever higher levels. There is no place for ego in ministry. There's no place for ambition for position. Pastor Brett, I commend these four men to you to be set in office as the first deacons of Rise Up Church. Thank you, Pastor Dave, and thank you, gentlemen. Man, these guys are great. This is an honor, and this is a very, very big deal for me. Um, Anthony, Daniel, Chris, Yale, this morning you stand before God in this church as having been duly appointed to the office of deacon. And I have seen, and everybody's seen if they've been looking at all, an unmistakable devotion to God in each of you and an untiring love for his people. You guys demonstrate it continually, even when no one is looking. And uh, as your pastor, I just want you to know how grateful. Maybe you guys turn this way so I can talk to you as well. Maybe kind of halfway. That way they can see you and I can see you. But we just want you to know, and we did this first service also, but we felt that it was important to uh, recognize them in front of the whole congregation at both services because it's really a big deal. I'm so grateful for them. And, and we know as a church, I, I think it takes, we're up to like, I don't know, 18 or 22 people or something to pull off a service on a Sunday. So many of you are involved in so many ways, and we're grateful for all of it. Um, these guys right here are, are men particularly that God has clearly chosen to serve, to serve his church and to serve as spiritual leaders and as examples to other believers. 
and and I mentioned this before, you couldn't find four more diverse personalities than these four here. No way. They're awesome guys, each in their own right, but there's no cookie cutter. God doesn't cookie cut his people in the body of Christ. And um, as, as Pastor Dave mentioned, this isn't about power or position. It's really about servanthood. That's what it all boils down to. I believe the diakono, I think the original language means servant. And um, that's what you guys are. It, it, a deacon carries great responsibilities, but the privileges and the rewards far outweigh the burdens. Um, Paul tells Timothy in 1 Timothy 3.13, for those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. So our corporate mission statement, for anybody that doesn't know, or even if you do, we have a simple corporate mission statement, three parts, love God, equip people, share Jesus. Will you guys commit to, or are you committed to that corporate mission statement? I know you are. All right. As individuals in this church, we have an individual mission statement. As simple as we can make it, live for God. That's what we try to do. We don't want to live for ourselves. We want to live for God. Will you guys uphold that commitment to live for God to the best of your ability? Thank you. A um, couple more questions for you. Will you uphold the truth of God's word? Will you endeavor, endeavor to be a Christ-like example by God's grace? Will you be faithful and regular in attendance, wholehearted in giving, responsible in seeking solutions to problems? Yes. All right. Will you be an encourager as you shepherd others and unite this church? Yes. All right. It's unanimous so far. Um, will you be godly husbands and fathers and guard your lives against impurity and bitterness and pride? Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> These men truly have servants' hearts, and they have demonstrated a commitment to God and to this church, and they routinely go above and beyond what is expected. You know, in the beginning, you don't really have a lot of expectations. You just let God do what he wants to do through his people, and then, um, you know, people uh, move forward in their own individuality. These men have been in ministry for a long time. They, they've, they've begun it in their own personal ways. Anthony um, the Marine, some people call him the Marine, uh, improvise, adapt, and overcome. This man serves. He has, uh, I feel like when I see him, he, he moves. He moves in a certain way. I feel like he always has an invisible rucksack on his back. Like always, wherever he goes, picking something up, helping someone to, to their car, just serving in every way he can. We went to Israel. We had a bus full of like 30 people. And here he was helping people off the bus, helping people on the bus, always taking care of people, serving them. And um, he also, uh, I, I believe you served a tour in Iraq during the Gulf War for our country. I think Somalia. Anyway, I won't go through all of it. He, he's just a blessing. He and his wife, Amber, and I know she's here, they rise to every challenge. They jump in to help at every turn. And in many ways, you guys and the people you are make this church a great church. So we just want to thank you, Anthony, very much. I love you. Um, DC, Daniel Creighton, he has a heart for the Lord without question. He serves on the worship team. You probably noticed that. He's led small groups for a long time at his home here at this church. Um, Daniel and Sandra are busy ministers. They, they live for God, just like our mission statement. Daniel has a prophetic anointing, and he um, and Sandra sacrifice and minister a lot. I mean, they come alive helping people be healed. They come alive helping people discover the Lord's will for their lives. Every chance they get. And I see Daniel smiles like a child. He gets excited seeing God move in people's lives. Always endeavoring to grow also. Um, they've never been involved on a worship team before this last year. And here they are up here practically every week growing and, and serving God in new ways and and there's just so much more to it. Been such a blessing to this church since day one. Daniel, thank you. Love you, sir. This man here to my right and your left, Chris Wagner. This guy is a devotee of the Lord. He is devoted. He is a Christian. He has been uh, studying the Word for a long time. And man, does he know it. He used to teach me things Years ago in our small group that we had, um, I don't know, it had to be at least 15 years ago, maybe more. Um, 
And uh, he's been ministering to men, been very involved in men's ministry, taking part in small groups, hosting things, teaching discipleship classes, all different kinds. I've known him, like I said, a long time. He's been an encouragement to me personally on a regular basis. And he's a servant in this church. And no matter what's going on with Chris in his life and his personal life, all these years he is present and he is about the Father's business all the time. And uh, I mentioned this before because he told me a long time ago, and he's been working on um, some biblical books, fictional accounts, if I'm not mistaken, about King, kinsmen, redeemers, tying in um, the Bible and, and stories, and he just has a wealth inside of him. I'm just, man, I just love you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for, thank you for, thank you also for accepting this position. I mean, when you ordain, which this is, but you just are recognizing something that God has already done from the foundations of the earth, earth. So it's a pleasure to recognize that. But it's also a position that, that they, they are accepting. They know there's a mantle of leadership, and they are um, committed to it. So I just I thank you for that, Chris. And my, my brother Yale here, he's been at this church the shortest amount of time of these men, but I've known him the longest. I'm pretty sure we were roommates when I met Lucinda because I remember going back home and bragging about <laughs> this little brunette that I met and, and talking about her and... and uh, Anyway, we go back a ways, and what I can tell you about Yale is he's, uh, he's a genuine man who loves the Lord, loves his family, cares about people, and lives to serve, and it was such a treat because we he was in our wedding, too, just a side note, but I hadn't, we hadn't talked in a couple of decades, and he walked up here um, last year, at the end of last year sometime, and I just hadn't seen him in a long time. It was just such a blessing. And the very first day, he's like, where do I dump the, the coffee? You know, at the end of service, everyone's gone. And him and his wife, Janet, they're serving already and have been serving since that day in so many ways. Helping with the youth, hosting gatherings. Um, just, I, I could go on for a long time. But uh, I just want you guys to know, where my notes go? I was just doing this. Um, Oh, oh yeah, the blower. I got to tell him the blower. Saturday morning, I get up early. The blower is something that most of these guys have handled. I'm usually up before blowers, but I've been awakened on Saturday morning. They come and blow out the church. This morning was no different, early Sunday morning. Um, there's a lot of work that gets done here. It has to be. You don't really think about it, but a couple hundred people sometimes on Sundays are in and out of here, and it just creates a wake of clean up and repair and things like that to keep it going and so Yale and these guys and Pastor Dave here they just they've just helped so much and many of you have as well but this is specifically about you guys Yale I love you man I'm so glad you're here thank you I I want to say this I think when we see people serve and some people we see serve a lot um we think to ourselves well that's nice they have the time to do that and I mean that's true. Not everybody has a schedule that will permit volunteer service at the church because of work and family commitments and things like that. But I want you guys to know that these four, without exception, are very accomplished men. They really are. Um, they're committed to their marriages and their families, dynamic and diverse families. They have successful careers. Uh, I mentioned it's part of Anthony's military career. He plays a critical role in the company that he works for. He troubleshoots. He fixes things. They call him, and here he comes with his pack, and he fixes. He travels. He works long, unpredictable hours out of town um, helping others, just like a Marine who, who lives to serve. That's Anthony. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Daniel's a retired Navy chief. Recently retired, I think only 3% of enlisted Navy make it to chief. That's an accomplishment in and of itself. Um, also active in ministry, pursuing a, a post-military career in business and, and other things. And um, that's just a little bit about Daniel. And, and Chris here um, is a criminal defense attorney with his own practice for many years. He's been advocating for people. He's been litigating for people. He is um, just, just uh, an amazing man. And um, Yale, district manager for a national insurance company, he guides, he coaches, he resources over 50 agents in his Southern California district. What I'm just saying is these guys are not slouches in any way. They're productive people. They're achievers. And um, I just want to recognize them 
Because the Bible says we should know those who labor among us. And I'll tell you this, not one of them wants any recognition for this. I'm pretty sure they all winced a little bit when we said, can you, can you come up? And like, never once has serving uh, entered their minds so that they could get accolades. That's kind of what makes them the guys for the job, to be honest. So thank you guys. Um, and the last thing I want to recognize in front of everyone is your wives. I've been in ministry a long time, and I am fully convinced that neither husband nor wife can have a truly successful ministry without their spouse being with them in their corner, believing in them, encouraging them, supporting them, and praying for them all the time. It's got to be that way. So wives, would you come stand by your man for just a minute, each one of you? Sandra, Creighton, Amber Barcenas. Ruth Wagner and Janet Long. These are women of God. These are women who set an excellent example and who are truly get dedicated to the Lord's work and to their, their husband's success. And um, we need to acknowledge and encourage these women because without their faithfulness, none of it will work. We need you. Just, we just love you. And I want um, the church to recognize that as well. So church, I have a question. Will you pray for these men and women as they do the same for you on an ongoing basis? Will you? If you will, say I will. I will. If you will, say amen. amen. All right, good. Thank you. So at this time, um, I'm going to have them uh, turn around, face you. And um, gosh, Pastor Dave, come forward here. Um, I'm just going to ask you that we, we the whole church gathered around them during first service, the ones that were here. If you could just stretch your hands forward and let's just ask God to bless their lives. Lord, we thank you for all eight of these people. We thank you for the anointing placed on them. We thank you for the gifts placed in them. We thank you for the passion that they have for you and for your word, Lord. And we just want to come around them as our church family and thank you for them. First off, thank you for their leadership. Thank you for their commitment. Thank you for the, the life of sacrifice they lead. And it's not a sad life, Lord. These are victorious lives. We thank you that they love your word. And we thank you that you protect them from the evil one at every turn, Lord. We thank you that they'll never be defeated because if God be for them, who can be against them? We just thank you, and we ask you to help them in everything they do, whatever they put their hand to, Lord, in ministry, that it would prosper, that their marriages would prosper, that their kids would be blessed and their kids and their kids, Lord, and that they would um, always just be clearly marked as they are wherever they go, that there's something in them that people see and want to know you better because of it, Lord. Fulfill your purposes in these people, and thank you, Lord, for them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So now, before they come back down, hold on. We did a little signing ceremony during first service, but now that that's done, I'm just going to hand these over. Michelle Reinhardt, would you come up here as well? Come on, because we're not leaving you out. This is Pastor Dave's wife, Michelle Reinhardt. And, and Pastor Dave must be recognized because I had no idea how to put together a deacon crew or where to even begin, but God sent him here last year. It's a funny story. I was at the dentist, and I was in the chair, and I'm like, um, you know, I talk on the phone a lot. I try not to be one of those people that has to include the whole world in my conversation, but somehow he heard me in the dentist chair, and I got stuff coming out of my mouth and everything, and, and then the, the dental hygienist hands me a post-it note. I go, huh? I said, Hey, brother, heard you talking, just an old preacher, one to another. He says, give me a call, let's talk church. <laughs> I go, who could do this? <laughs> and she says, some guy. And I just had to call it later on, and I met him through it. And next thing I know, he's here Easter morning at 4 o'clock in the morning with his cell phone and a little flashlight going, how can I help, sir? <laughs> Been helping ever since. I'm just blessed that God sent him and Michelle here. And... And he's been a pastor and a Bible teacher for a long time. This certificate of, rec certificate of recognition says that he's been called and is hereby recognized as being one who is equipped and trained for the work of the ministry to uphold God's word, disciple others, and be a witness to those who have not come to know the love of God in Christ. We are honored to call you pastor. Thank you for your service at Rise Up. And thank you, Miss Michelle. For Anthony Barcenas, show everybody somebody get out of camera. 
for Daniel Creighton, Deacon Daniel, Deacon Chris, Deacon Yale. Thank you. Someone take a couple pictures. God bless you all. You may be seated whenever they're done taking pictures. Awesome. Thank you. That's great, man.